The United Nations have estimated that the global retail market for illicit drugs is now at 320 US billion dollars, which is the equivalent to 2.1 trillion rand. Um, going through my criminology textbooks, I'm now studying the section on drugs and there's quite an extensive overview on the use and abuse of drugs, why people turn to drugs, how it affects the family, the community, um, and just some common sense insight with regards to the world of drugs. Now, from reading everything here on drugs, one gets a pretty alarming insight into the reality of what is happening with regards to drugs. I mean, where they give you an overview of the money that it costs, of you know the economic circumstances it leaves people in, the deaths involved, the addiction rate, it is extensive. Okay, so some of the things you know, so I'm not going to go into that because that's something that you can research for yourself. What I'm going to look at here is the point of um, you know where they say that, for example. They have certain solutions that they've come up with, which is not commonsensical, and I will explain for the following reasons. They say here that one of the, the solutions or prevention strategies would be delaying the onset of substance abuse in a community. So where they say that it is hoped that by delaying the onset of contact with illegal substances or reducing the likelihood of contact with such substances, fewer young people will turn to drug abuse. Now, all of these solutions which people are coming up with are not going to work. Why is that? Because the drug problem is not the real problem. The drug that man has become addicted to, first of all and foremost, is money, greed. You are not going to get rid of that addiction by getting rid of the drug problem. That is why, first of all, you have to ask yourself the question, why is there such an extensive drug abuse in the world? Why do people use drugs? You know, just, just ask common sense questions. Why do people use drugs? They are addicted to something which makes them feel a certain way. Now, if you are going to address the problem of drug use, okay, then you've got to do it effectively with regards to not locking the person in an institute saying, now I'm removing you from the drug, you are cured. You have to start looking at why do people use substances. The government has legalized alcohol. Okay. Now, according to my textbooks here, what is very interesting is that alcohol has been classified as... A drug together with many other types of drugs so as an example here drugs have have now been categorized according to their effects on the body and under central nervous system depressants you have narcotics opium heroin morphine pethidine walcanol codeine hypnotics which include your painkillers, sleeping pills, tranquilizers, inhalers, including alcohol. Now, the government has legalized alcohol as a drug, an accepted drug within society. Families allow this drug in their world, in their lives, in their homes, and the entire society supports and participates in this mind-numbing central nervous system depressant so first of all you have to look at where have we as society given already given permission to the existence of drugs where do we within ourselves justify the existence of drugs oh it's just my recreational or oh it allows me to get spiritually closer to my higher purpose those are all justifications like oh i use alcohol because it helps me to relax those are justifications that is used by all of humanity to allow some form of drug or another. So you cannot judge one form of drug that that person is a druggie and they're apparently a bad person because they like using heroin. 
but here you are you are allowing alcohol in your home you're getting intoxicated you showing that your children your children grow up and it becomes an accepted part of reality that people get drunk and you know it's it's always if i go somewhere and talk to people one of the first discussions that will come up is what party they went to and how drunk they got and what they did while they were drunk so this has become an accepted conversational point around a drug that all of society has accepted and most of society is addicted to in one way or another. So first of all, we have sort of now gotten to a point where we have allowed that. And that is why the drug problem is one of the reasons why it has such a existing, such a massive problem because we've all already accepted it in one form or another. Therefore, it has gotten to this problem where drugs is now a massive problem. Secondly, they say that the illegal drugs have now shifted to your prescription type drugs so people using you know your ritalins and your morphines and those type of painkillers tranquilizers sleeping pills are now becoming the new accepted drugs um so in other words in households already people are training and preparing the way for their children and for themselves to become addicted to painkillers without taking a look at the cause of why we have allowed this. So the next point is that we've already, our governments have allowed all of this to happen and they cannot tell me that the drug problem is this massive and that they cannot do anything about it. You have to here develop common sense and start asking, is my government real? Does my government actually do what is best for me and for the people that it is supposed to be guiding? Because why, why do the drug dealers have power over the governments? Where is that problem coming in? Start asking commonsensical questions like that. Then the next point, as I mentioned, is if you remove the drug problem, those who are selling the drugs, okay, so we've already looked now at the drug users of how to address the actual core point of why people use drugs, which has become an accepted position within society. The second point is if you're going to take away drugs, the drug dealers who are now making millions, I mean, what are these statistics? 320 billion US dollars. So if you're going to remove drugs, what are those people going to do? They are not doing it because they want you to have a good time. They are doing it because of the money, the drug called greed. So if you're going to remove drugs, which in this case they have all these clever little strategies that can be used of targeting problem people in communities and, you know, keeping youngsters away from problem situations and information dissemination and, you know, all of that is, if you look at it, if you remove people selling drugs they are going to turn to other things they will sell child pornography they will sell whatever they have to sell to get money so here one has to really go and look at the core issues behind why drugs are sold and why the government allows drugs where do we as humanity already within our lives and in our family environments allow drugs why do we use drugs why do we become addicted to drugs through which we justify well alcohol isn't such a biggie i mean how many people die from alcohol and alcohol related problems and how many crimes are committed due to crimes um that are focused on around alcohol, people getting drunk, people, you know, wanting to party, stealing money, um, having car accidents, endangering other people's lives. It's the exact same thing. You can't blame one person because he's a heroin addict, but then you like getting drunk every weekend with your mates. I mean, it's the exact same thing. So those are the common sense considerations behind. You cannot just remove people you know look at how do we get children to not become drug, drug addicts if drug sellers start noticing that say in 20 years time there's so many less people buying drugs they are going to turn to other forms of making money the problem is that people have become addicted to money and everything that money represents 
And unless we become self-honest as humanity and address the actual issues behind what it is that we've already allowed, we're not going to solve the problem. We're going to run in circles because take away the drug problem and in another 50 years time, you're going to have another massive problem focused around something else. I mean, not that this world can get more severely screwed up. I mean, I was looking now for an example of, if I was a major drug dealer and you took away half my clientele, what would I do? Um, sell body parts? Okay, that's already happening. Um, child pornography? That's already happening. Uh, snuff movies? Mm, that's already happening. So come on, let's, let's look at the extent to which the greed is driving people and for us to actually look at the money system and our value that we place in money and work with that first before we address other problems. Thank you.